So you probably picked up a Nikon D3400 and you're wondering, what lens do I put on this camera to make it work the way that I want it to work? Today, we're gonna cover five lenses that I think you'll really enjoy using on this camera. Now, understand there are a lot more lenses to use for this camera, but today we're only gonna be covering five. Before we get too far into the content, if you're new here to Free Will Photos, consider hitting the subscribe button. Every week we go over tutorials on how to edit your photos inside of On One Photo Raw and Lightroom. So if that's something you're interested in, then hit the subscribe button, smash that bell icon so you can get notified whenever we launch new videos. Before we get into all of the lens selections, I want to know what you're thinking about if there's a lens that you have your eye on and you're just hoping to get some more insight from anyone. Go ahead and put that into the comment section below. Now, if there's a lens that you are already using, I just want to know what you're using for your D3400. So go ahead and throw, throw that into the comment section as well. Today, I'm only going to be covering five of the lens. However, there is a link in the description that will take you to a website that helps curate and it'll help you find a series of lens for your camera. You just plug in the model of your camera and then it's going to give you all of the lens that are compatible with your camera and even if the autofocus works, which is a big deal for the D3400. All the lens that I'm gonna go over today will work with the autofocus system inside the D3400 because the autofocus is built into the lens. So it's an electronic autofocus mechanism. Let's get into the content. All right, so the first lens that we have today is gonna be the 18 to 55 kit lens, probably came with your camera. This is the best lens to start with, especially if this is a consumer level camera that you just purchased to learn how to use or to learn photography in general. This is gonna get you through a lot of images. And in fact, I use this to photograph my kids when I first picked up my Nikon D5200 years ago. I used the 18 to 55 that came with the camera to get the first thousand, maybe even 4,000 images of my kids, uh, especially because I was still learning the mechanics of the camera and how to use the settings. Now. The reason why this lens is so good for the D3400 is one, it's a DX lens, so it's already designed for the crop sensor camera in, or I'm sorry, the crop sensor inside of the camera, which means you're gonna get really good image quality straight out of camera with this lens. Even if you put it on the full auto setting for the camera, you're gonna be able to get some really good images, all right? Now, as you start to progress, you're gonna find that the limitation to the 18 to 55 is not the focal length. Uh, it, it's going to be the variable aperture and that you're not gonna be able to shoot this very well in low light without having to increase your ISO. I'm not uh, completely opposed to increasing ISO. I think that there are a lot of ways to reduce the ISO in post, so, it's okay, uh, especially since you're gonna be using it in lower light. So as long as you can get a pretty decent shutter speed so you have a very sharp image, it's okay if the image comes out a little grainy in my personal opinion. I know uh, there's a lot of people who don't like grainy, noisy images, if you will, but if the image is sharp and you can tell what it is and you're capture capturing the moment, then I think that that's good. But that's gonna be the only limitation you really have with the 18 to 55. It's not as sharp in the corners, but that's super technical. We're talking about creative vision and making art happen, okay? We're talking about making art happen. So 18 to 55, great lens. It is a little plasticky, so you gotta be careful with it, but still, great lens to start with. The next lens we have is the Nikon 70 to 300. This is one of my favorite lens to use when I'm photographing things that are moving far away from me and I can't really get closer to them or I don't want to get closer to them. Uh, this lens comes in extremely handy. Now this is the 4.5 to 6.3 uh, variable aperture lens but I have used this version and the older version to capture some fast moving aircraft uh, at an air show. I've also used this to capture wildlife. I've used this lens to capture my kids if they're far away from me and I just don't feel like moving around or it just doesn't seem right. This is a great lens to get really close to your subject or pretty close to your subject, however you wanna look at it, 
this lens is going to be amazing. Same concept that you have with the 18 to 55, you're gonna run into with this, which is the aperture. You're not gonna be able to use this in low light situations, not very well at least, without bumping that ISO. So if you don't want to bump your ISO extremely high, you're gonna have to look at the other three lens that I have on this, uh, this video. But for the zoom price, or I'm sorry, for the zoom range that you get on this lens, there are very few lens in underneath $400 that you're gonna be able to pick up and shoot things across a field. Uh, so if you got kids that are in sports, this is a great lens to pick up because one, hopefully the sports are outside. If it's an indoor sport, then you're gonna have to bump that ISO unless it's a really bright arena or location that they're playing the sport or whatever the indoor event is. If it's bright, then you're gonna be fine. If it's not so bright, and we're talking like fluorescent lights, you're not gonna get very much uh, mileage out of the aperture that you have on this without bumping your ISO. But if you're outside, sunlight is really great. Even on cloudy days, overcast days, this lens can really capture some great images. The next lens that we're gonna talk about is the Nikon 50 millimeter 1.8 G lens. Now. I love this lens. This was actually my second lens. It's attached to my D610, uh, which is my full frame camera that I love. To I love using this camera as well, but this isn't a camera video. This isn't about that. This lens right here is actually a full frame lens, but because it has the exact same mount system that Nikon cameras have until they recently went to the mirrorless cameras, this is the F mount. So you can put this onto full frame or crop sensor cameras, and you're gonna get a lot of mileage out of this 50 millimeter lens. This lens does not come in at a really high price point. I picked this one up right after I got used to using my camera and said, you know what? I'm shooting a little bit more often in low light, and I still use this lens to this day. I can't remember exactly when I bought this, but I picked up my first camera in about 2011, and then about a year later, so 2012 was when I got this, if I remember correctly, somewhere in that ballpark, not very important. What's important is that this is a very, very sharp lens and it's a 1.8 aperture, which means I'm letting in a lot more light. I use this for portraits. I use this for anything where I wanna isolate the subject from the background and really just blow out the background, especially if the background is really far away from the subject. Uh, this lens is awesome. The downside to this lens, unlike the 18 to 55 and the 70 to 300, is this one requires you to zoom with your legs because the it doesn't zoom. This is just a focus ring on the outside of it. So you're really, really going to have to pay attention to what you're doing with this lens. If you have the ability to move around, this lens is going to be a absolute go-to. There's a reason why a lot of photographers refer to this particular type of lens as the Nifty 50. And it's usually just because it works in a lot of different scenarios. Now, when you put this onto your D3400, you're gonna have a 1. times or 1.5 times crop, which means you're just gonna add another 25 millimeters onto the top of this. So this is really gonna give you like a 75 millimeter focal length, give or take, right? This is going to be really, really good if you're doing single portraits or a portrait with two people. And like I have two kids, I use this for uh, my kids all the time just to capture them in their everyday moments. So really love this lens, not expensive at all. Uh, by the way, links to all of these lens will be in the description below. They are Amazon affiliate links. It does help out the channel. Um, so if there's something that you like on here, well, consider using those links in the description and pick up one of these great lens. All right. The next lens on our list is the Nikon 35 millimeter 1.8. Now it took me a while to get this lens, but once I got it, I love this lens. 
It is really good if you're trying to do story. It, there's a reason why they call the 35 millimeter the storytelling lens. I didn't understand that. Uh, I had to think. I had to change the way I compose images when I picked up this lens. The reason for that is because it includes so much of the the surrounding area that you really have to pay attention to what's inside of your frame before you hit that shutter button. Um, or, you know, you can crop it out in post, but if you want to reserve as much of your pixel density as you can, uh, then you're going to want to make sure that you pay attention to what you're snapping with this. But this is really good if you have, if you're walking down the street, street photography, one, really good for street photography, uh, because you're really going to be able to capture the environment that you are photographing subjects in. The other thing that this is really good for is product photography. Believe it or not, it's good for storytelling of product photography. So if you want to show off how a handbag looks while you're walking down the street, then you can use this. You get a little bit closer to the handbag, but you'll still have enough surrounding area for people to understand like, oh, well, this isn't inside of a studio. This is a person that's actually using it and can really work with the psyche for anyone who's looking to purchase that that item. I love this 35 millimeter lens. Uh, this is actually one of my preferred lens for recording as well. So I put this onto my Nikon D5200, which I just took it off of the D5200. Um, I put the lens on the here for pretty much any videos that I want to shoot and that lens works great it's extremely sharp it gives me the wide enough depth of field or I'm sorry the wide enough field of view whatever uh, and the focal length is perfect for the environments that I find myself recording in all right so the next lens that we have is the Nikon 40 millimeter 2.8 G lens this is a macro lens and it's very special not everyone's going to need a macro lens because of what it does, but I do a lot of still life and product photography, and this lens has helped me with my creative vision more times than not. With being able to get close up onto an image, or I'm sorry, get close up onto a subject and enhance the image in a way that I can't get with any of the other four lens that I mentioned earlier. So if you're looking for something that's going to help you be a little bit more creative and you'll be able to capture more detail out of the subjects that you're photographing, then this lens is going to help you out a lot. I very rarely use this for anything other than macro photography. Uh, so if there's something really small that I'm photographing and I want to make it look larger than life, like a, a figurine, a toy or something like that, I'm going to go for my macro lens. And I really love the 40 millimeter one because this helps me tell a story with those subjects as well. So this, again, uh, a fairly inexpensive lens, but has catapulted my photography to a extremely new height. Uh, as soon as I picked this up and I started using it, it was just so much fun and I didn't want to put it down. So there's the five lens just to wrap everything up. Obviously, I went over two zoom lens. I had two prime lens in there, and then I had a specialty prime lens for that macro lens. Not everyone's going to need all of these lens, especially if you're doing this as a hobbyist and you just want to have a, a few different options. The two best lens that you can start out with, if you just had to pick up a camera today and go run, I would go with the 18 to 55, and then that's 70 to 300. Those two lens put together, you're going to have a very wide focal range from 18 all the way up to 300 millimeters. And you're going to have some really good opportunities to capture the images that you want to create. But also, I recommend that you get that 50 millimeter lens as your very next lens. Because the 50 millimeter lens is it, it's so versatile. It just works so well. Then you can pick up that 35 millimeter or you could pick up the 40 millimeter. Those two can come in whatever order you want. Uh, if that fits your photography style or your creative vision, don't pick up a lens just because someone else made a picture and you're like, oh, man, I need that lens to make that picture. 
what I recommend you do is you take that 18 to 55 and you squeeze every ounce of creativity that you can get out of the lens before you go and purchase another lens. Because if you spend your time and money and energy on res- researching a new lens and then paying for a new lens, you're, you're really missing out on the opportunity to capture images that are happening in front of you every single day. Until next time, I want you guys to stay inspired and keep creating.